Okay, welcome back. Um, just wanted to uh, show briefly uh, if you actually wanted um, to fail the devices over. Maybe you're going to do some maintenance. Um, show fail. This device is uh, is active right now. Say on this device we needed to um, swap out the switch that the DMZ is connected to. When we uh, power down the DMZ switch, uh, this interface uh, line status is going to go down and that's going to force a failover. So let's say you wanted to gracefully fail it over. In the unit that's active, you can do a no failover active. No failover active in the active unit, enter, switching to standby. The standby unit, switching to active, right? So now over here, if we do a show fail, we've gone to standby and the other host is gone to active. And of course over here, show fail, the secondary is now the active unit and the standby, uh, the primary, the other unit is standby. So now you can pull the cable that this guy is connected to um, or whatever you need to do <clears throat> maintenance wise that's related to the primary unit. This is the primary buddy, now he's in standby mode. You can go ahead and do it. <clears throat> and um, when you want to fail back, uh, so we were in the active unit doing no fail over active. The other way to, to fail over is to be in the standby unit and do fail over active. So just leave off the no and it will it will force it back. Um, and well, we'll just go ahead and do it. Fail over. Active. There you go. Switching to active. Show fail. This host is now active and the other is standby, right? Um, good. So I, one of the key things to remember though, um, I mean, I said it before, I just want to say it again because it's relatively important, right? When you're entering config into the device, get do a show fail first. Make sure you're in the active device. Again, it doesn't matter if you're in the primary or standby uh, or secondary, sorry. The key thing is you're in the active device, not the standby device. doesn't matter if it's secondary or primary, but you have to be in the active device. You type in the active device, the config gets replicated to the standby device. To save it into the flash of the standby device, you can do a write to mem, or you can do a um, copy running to start, and it will save it into the flash on the on the standby unit. Um, but always enter your commands in the active unit. So again, we're in the show fail. <clears throat> we're in the standby unit. Let's go ahead and create access list test permit IP any any look warning configuration replication is not performed from the standby unit to the active unit configurations are no longer in sync so you don't have any way now to to push it right so you can either grab this line paste it in over here and then force the sync like do a save or a write standby um, or you can do a no in here, but I think even after you do the no, you should see it's not synced. You can do show run access list. You only have the outside ACL. The other one is gone, but still the sync is out of whack, right? So if we come back here, show fail, it's active. Now we do write mem. Now it's sync. Now they should be in sync again, right? Um, so that's important though. You don't want to enter commands into the the standby unit, not realizing that <laughs> you know when it comes time to it some you know it loses power or something. It's not gonna have the config there when it comes back up and you know, heaven forbid you put in a whole bunch of config and you've lost it all. Uh, so it's important you're in the um, primary unit. Um I'm not sure I mentioned, but the, the interface status should be normal like this. They could be normal waiting, which means they've, you know, maybe you've just um, turned it up. Maybe this one might be in show fail waiting. No, it's already gone to normal. Um, anyway, normal alone is what you want. Normal in anything in brackets is still passing traffic and all, and it should soon transition to the normal state. Um, you know, if the interface has failed, obviously it's not going to say normal here. I can't remember off, off the top of my head exactly what the syntax is, but it's definitely not going to say normal. Um, I think it'll say failed in the end. If one of the interfaces actually fail, it will say fail. But there's some transitional states in between. Um, but normal is good. 
uh, normal anything in brackets is, is okay but uh, straight up normal is the best um, you know it could be waiting which isn't so bad it's, it's slowly transitioning but normal is what you want to see um, I guess the last thing maybe I'll talk about is um, the interface testing that happens so there's four tests that happen um, on the interfaces to determine um, if it's like when if we pulled the, the cable out of the um, DMZ interface for example it would start doing these tests at the interface to determine if it's actually dead or not and so the first uh, test it does is the NIC status test and it's uh, strictly just a link up link down check on the NIC card itself am I plugged in or not do I have my line status shows up or down if it's down uh, it's considered failed and it goes to test 2 which is the network activity test and it simply counts any received packets for five seconds if it doesn't receive any it moves on to test 3 test 3 is the ARP test the ARP test takes the 10 most recent entries from the ARP table sends an ARP one at a time to those and waits for five seconds to see if there's any received packets from the ARP if still nothing I mean if there is something then it goes back to normal and uh, and everything just continues to monitor as it normally would but it's still nothing after the ARP test it moves to the fourth and final test which is the ping test it sends a broadcast ping out the interface and again it waits for five seconds to count any packets coming back if there's still no reply after the fourth, fourth test testing starts over again but it starts over at the ARP test step three it won't go back to do the NIC status test and it won't go back to do the network activity test. It just goes back to step three of the ARP test and back and forth ping test, ARP test, ping test. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that in. Um, I think I've got everything. Um, maybe I'll show you this. Um, one last thing. Show fail. So we're, uh, again, we're primary active. So let's, um, let's fail it over. Let's do no... Uh, failover active right so now we're standby um, uh, over here I'll just do a quick write to T so you can see these max remember we put these max in like this right um, and over here show fail so again we're in the secondary device but it's the active device if we were going to enter config right now we'd want to do it here not in the primary because the primary is in standby right okay that's not what I wanted to show you I just thought I'd mention it again um, if we do show interface say E1 you see the interface IP is dot one so it's assumed to the dot one IP right and it's assumed the MAC address see the MAC address on E1 ends with 8E01 and on E1 the primary MAC ends with 8E01 not 8C01 right so we said in the beginning that the point of putting these commands in was that not only will the uh, standby unit take over the primary unit's IP, <clears throat> uh, it will also take over its MAC address. Again, so that the devices on the internal network, it's seamless to them. They're still replying to the same MAC address they were before when, they, when they're when ARPing. And there's no change. The, the, the standby unit will reply for, for the uh, primary that's been failed. And it's seamless for the internal users. Okay. I think that wraps it up. I've covered all the basics. Um, there may be a little more detail I've missed. And if, uh, if I have and you have some questions or any comments, I'll leave them on YouTube. I'll do my best to get back to you. And thanks for watching.